point. Okay, so it's introduction to smart homes. We start with when we want to define what is a smart home. You say now we are coming. I mean, uh, this, by the way, smart home is in a much bigger context, which is smart cities where you have smartness in almost everything in the energy sector, in the transportation system. So everything now is transforming. Our life is transformed. So we want to understand when we hear this terminology, smart home, what does it mean? I mean, are we living in stupid homes or what, 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 what's, what's, what's the, the word smart? What does it really mean? So a smart home is uh, where we live as a residence that it uses internet connected devices. And this is a key word. Uh, there is a terminology that is used also, maybe you heard this term, which is I of T, internet of things, okay? So the smart home is based on this idea that your devices now, appliances, lightning systems, thermostat, everything is your home, security cameras is connected by the the internet. So this is the word I of T where it comes because I of T is an alternative way of, or it is a direct application of the smart home. What it does, it enable remote monitoring and management. So you can monitor the performance of your house and also you can manage it as well. So you can see and you can control. Control what? Appliances and systems like lighting system or heating system. Another definition that it, it here it comes from what it provides us to us as a user, uh, safety, comfort, and efficiency or energy efficiency. These three things are tied together as an outcome of the smart home. It's a safer home, more comfort, and less energy usage. How is done this? Using uh, control of smart devices, often by smart home app on the smartphone or any laptop, tablet, anything, you can have this interaction between your home and your devices through the, the internet. So this is like uh, examples of the home technologies. And I would just randomly selected some of the features that we have, and I just shed some lights about what is it actually, how it works, and what make it smart. With thermostat, security cameras, locks, irrigation systems, etc. So let's talk about some of them. And we'll start from what we end. So we talked about the power, and we said that we, at home, we are built using the energy, kilo, watt, hour. And in the first row here, I mean, sorry, in the first column, you see traditional meters. This is the old technology, either uh, you in this format or in this format. Uh, basically, the utility will send someone there to your premises, will take the reading. Sometimes if these are inside the houses, they will knock on the door and they will go and have access. Most of the time it's outside the house, they go and take the reading and the difference between the two consecutive months, they will give you the bill, how much kilowatt hour you have consumed. And this is, of course, I don't need to mention that how costly is this? Because you have to send someone. And also, sometimes it has some problems. I mentioned before the dog problem. People have a dog in their houses, someone comes, the dog attack them. So we will start to come up with different technologies until we reach to the smart meters. Now, what is a smart meter? Basically, it is this is these are some two examples of the smart meters. They are, and here's two-way real-time link between the customer and the energy company. So it means that there is two-way communication. There is a communication link between your meter and the utility, and it's two-way, meaning they can derive information from you and they can send messages to you. And also the same thing that you can also communicate with the utility. So you can, your meter can communicate or yourself can communicate with the utility through the meter or the utility. And this is most likely what happened, at least in the application right now, that the utility will communicate with your meter to extract information 
or to do some other things as we will see. So the smart meters comes up with benefits to the utility. First, and this is the first incentive, as I just mentioned, that it enables them to read the meters remotely. They don't need to send anyone anymore to your house. So because there is this uh, two-way communication channel, they can go and take the readings of your meter. So this done now automatic, no need to send anyone. Also, if there is any outage, and this is something very important, the utility, uh, they have what we call a SCADA system, a system that they can see the power flow and what is going on. And if there's an outage, they will see it. However, they don't see it at the house level. They see it at a higher level. So if your house lost power in the before, before the only way they, tell you they will know that you lost power, you have to call them. If you don't call them, they will not know that there is an outage. They cannot see it. But now with the smart meter, they can tell because any house, even if it is less power consumption, there will be a little bit of power consumption. Once there is a shutdown of the power, so this is an indication that there is a shutdown of the power. So it will help them to identify any outage. Also data analytics, and this is very, very important. Uh, and it has many aspects, and I don't need to go in details here, but one of the aspects is the following. Now, the price in the uh, electrical energy is not the same during the day. And I mentioned in a previous uh, lecture, when we start talking about power uh, at the beginning of the term, that, that we, here in Waterloo, we have three different prices at different time zones. So at different times, intervals, we have different prices. We have three, three uh, prices. And why is that? Because uh, main thing is whenever there is a huge demand on power, the price goes up discourage people to use power. Now, when you get this information about the people, the individual houses, usages, you can do more studies about to see what is the trend and how you can uh, convince the people to uh, shift their loads, how you can do some incentives, actually. And this is done in some countries. Uh, you receive a message from the utility telling you that, okay, if you don't use uh, or shut down this amount of loads in your house, we will give you this incentive, which could be like a reduction of the price uh, or some other incentives. So this is something very important. Another thing, they can monitor the voltage. You can see, uh, for example, here, uh, the voltage in one of the houses. Now they can see at the entrance, remember when we say that the, when the cable come to your house, the first thing it sees is the energy meter. So there, this is 120 volt. It will never be 120 exactly. It will be changing. And usually there is sort of like 5% uh, plus minus 5% up and down. Okay, it's allowed to uh, go. So here is, for example, you see that this house, uh, it is within the plus minus 5%. So you, you, you know that if there is a collapse in the voltage, if there is a problem uh, happening in the system, you want to make sure that every single house will have this voltage within the plus minus 5%, because if the voltage start to increase, there is a danger that it might damage some of the appliances. If the voltage go below the, uh, the minus 5%, the, some of the appliances may not be uh, operate. So it is good for your utility to see every single house, which is something very, very important. Now, the smart meter, it doesn't only benefit the utility, it also benefits the user. It can, you can go via uh, an app on your mobile, on your laptop, you can see, okay, uh, this is the mid, this is the, the, the times I told you about, we have different prices here. So you, you can see here how much consumption in mid peak, off peak and the peak. Okay, and your objective, you wanna switch or change this, move it to here more. You don't want to utilize uh, your uh, utility, your, uh, your power and this region as much as you can. So when you see your usages every day, you can see it in real time and you can see it back dates, uh, dates. So then this is very important for you so that you might uh, try to change your uh, behavior. Okay, maybe we are using the dryer on the wrong time. Maybe we have to change it because the, the, the dryer, as we have seen, it's a huge load. Uh, the AC, maybe we need to do something about it, etc. How you can get all this information through the internet? Because it's a smart meter now, you can communicate with that smart meter and you can extract all this information in a graphical or in a table as we can see. 
So this is a very important feature of the smart home, which comes the smart, the smart bill. Smart lighting systems as well. Now we know the lights, you go in the home, switch it on, you leave the, the room. Hopefully you remember to switch it off. One of the tasks for me as a dad, I have to keep running inside the house, make sure that switch off the lights so the kids use the, the room. They don't bother to, to switch off the light because they don't pay the bill. I am the one who's paying the bill, so I have to pay attention more to these things. Now in smart home, I don't need to do this. And for example, the light will be only on whenever someone enters the room. If there is no one inside the room, it will be switched stay off and how is done that using a sensor a motion sensor and there are different types of motion sensors that can detect the movement some of them are based on ultrasound technology some of them based on uh, ir infrared when someone goes inside we our body emit heat okay so it can detect they see that there is some person is coming inside uh, the room so the light will be switching on so there are different types of technologies uh, that can detect someone so this is very important second thing also the dimming of the light it's not just on and off but also it controls how much light in the room based on the lighting condition in the in the window so the light will increase or decrease based on your needs based on your comfort it's not just an on off uh, switch and how is done this is using photo sensor you have used the photo sensor i believe in one of the experiments which is uh, a resistance that change is very based on the light how much light it receives the resistance will be changing so this is a sensor so based on this you can switch on and uh, or make the light dims uh, or make it brighter also it can be controlled remotely i am in, in in the work and oh i forgot to switch off the lights no one in the house then i can switch off the lights using from my mobile in 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 the house sorry in in, in uh, outside the house also i can program them to switch on and off at certain times if that is convenient to me and we look here uh, this is a typical smart system you have the phone where you connect things Okay, so the, the, the phone, you can communicate with the lights directly uh, using uh, uh, Bluetooth, for example, as a communication channel between you. And remember, smart devices, one of the aspects is that it has to have communication between your devices, internet-based devices, and the device itself. And this is one of the feature, the, the network, the communication network. Uh, also, sometimes you can communicate with uh, other using, uh, for example, Wi-Fi, Internet. How is do that? Through the cloud. Now, Dropbox and all these now applications. Now, many people, they don't save their files on their computer on the cloud. Now, the cloud is a very integral part of the smart homes where you can save data, you can communicate through the clouds. Uh, and you can switch on and switch off using the Wi-Fi instead of the Bluetooth. The Bluetooth has a problem that it can only work if you are in the close proximity. If, if you are inside the house, the Bluetooth range is, let's say, 100 meter max. Well, practically, it's less than that. So if you are far away from the house, you cannot switch on and off the lights using Bluetooth. Then you have to use the Wi-Fi and have to access the Internet through the, through the cloud, for example smart thermostat now i'm not sure if you have seen these thermostat before but i have seen them this is the very old one analog one you just uh, select the temperature setting here using a sort of uh, a physical knob that you move it by your hand then we come to the digital ones where i have something like this in my house okay will you go and you set the temperature uh, and maybe you can do some other things. Now, the smart thermostat, we have something even much more than this. Now, yes, you can control them remotely, again, by the internet. Remember, the internet, the remote communication is an integral part, but it's not that only. Also, the smart home, they have something intelligence. With it. They learn from your behavior. You will learn that, okay, that you come to the house at certain times. So they will adjust based on your behavior. And how is this is done using machine learning? So another aspect of the smart devices, some of them, they are enabled by uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence. 
so the learn from your behavior and they adjust the sitting, the sitting accordingly. Also, they can tell you what is the energy usage you have used. Uh, if there's a filter need to be changed, so we we'll re remind you. Uh, so there are many aspects, and of course, it depends on the product, depends on the company, uh, the features. You will see different features on those uh, devices. Security cameras. We have the security cameras, and uh, again, through the internet now, you can uh, you can look into them, you can see them. Okay, this is one of the features. Another important feature, interesting feature, that the camera themselves they can differentiate between residents, visitors, pets, and burglars. How is that? This can be done using again artificial intelligence and image processing. Uh, you can teach the system that okay, these are my visitors, these are the, the people who live in the house, then. Uh, by uh, face recognition, which is one of the basics of machine learning and image processing techniques, they can tell. Uh, they can tell if there is a pet that is a thing that is moving. Okay. Again, now with uh, if you heard the word deep learning, deep learning. This is the new trend in machine learning. Deep learning. This is a huge topic now, where you can identify the objects using their images. So you can tell if there is a pet, if there is a human being there. And now if there's a human being, you need to differentiate and you have like uh, two different layers. First, is it a human being who is entering the house or a pet? If it's a pet, it's okay. If it's a human being now. Is this is a resident? No. Is this a visitor? No. Then it's a stranger. Then you can get a warning uh, to, your, to your house. Appliances as well, like washing machines, like dishwashers, like a uh, fridge. You can now uh, program them uh, so that they can receive from the utility a signal now. Okay, now you can uh, switch on. And, and how is that? This is done. Uh, the outlet itself, the socket that you connect your, uh, your uh, appliance to it, it can be controlled by you so that you can manually switch it on and off. Or you can remotely switch it on and off. Or you can have access to the utility, and this is the future. And this is not yet done on a larger scale, but start to be uh, practiced globally, so that the utility they have access, they can switch on and off. Uh, your uh, so you, the, you you need to do your appliances. They are, I mean, your dishwasher, for example. Everything is already there, and the utility will okay switch on. Uh, your uh, they have the access if you want to if you don't want it's up to you uh, usually it depends on the contract you have with them there are certain incentives and again the major thing here is the smart meter where all the communication is done between you and uh, and the uh, uh, utility so now you can control on and off uh, remotely your appliances you can schedule them you can give access to the utility so that they can switch on and off your uh, your devices not everyone is comfortable with that but it depends on the, the people depends on what you want to do and what you want to achieve now what are the components and the challenges of a smart home now after all of this these applications the first and one of the most important thing is the sensor the sensor is something very very important any technology i talked about there is some sensing device either sensing the voltage or the current or sensing the temperature. Uh, for example, uh, there are some sensors to uh, tell you the quality of air. Uh, and there are many companies like Bosch and other companies that are interested in this technology. They make sensors that can detect any uh, compound that is harmful to our body. Uh, and these sensors are extremely small, like two by two millimeters. So you have them inside your house and those sensors it's not just as imagine two by two millimeter and they upgrade them now to even to tell you what exactly the, the compound is the co2 co what is exactly the harmful gas that is inside your house by integrating with the sensor machine learning machine learning is a code of course but you have to have a microcontroller you have to have an intelligent system inside your sensor and that's what lead us to what we call smart sensors as well smart sensor is an integral part of the smart home a sensor that can detect like a regular sensor 
like for example thermocouples uh, detect the temperature change by having a change in the voltage but it's not that only now this is the sensing part but it has communication capability it has intelligence capability to tell you if the temperature is high or low if the gas is detected uh, bad or not bad and how much and where so all these intelligence now they are they are integral part of the home coming from the smart sensor so sensors is a huge topic and we just touch a very small uh, part of it in this course we touch very small group of sensors but it's a huge thing and those who are interested to work in this because uh, for example i have seen students doing a phd from environmental engineering uh, working with uh, what's what is uh, called a network of sensors so for example you want to go and send some sensing devices to check the quality of water okay so you have an autonomous small boat with all types of sensors but of course because it's a lake you have to have too many positions there so you have what we call a network of sensors and those sensors collect data send these data and then analyze this data and tell you if there is a problem send you a message as sms message or an email if there is a problem in certain area of the water so this is just one of the applications where the smart sensors is very important for example for environmental engineering architectural engineers for example uh, when you talk about smart homes this is exactly one of the areas that you might be interested to pursue now you will, you will not design the sensor but you will use the sensor okay so you need to know how the sensor operates and you have the basics how to deal with the sensor what is a sensor uh, so that now with the plenty of knowledge that we have over YouTube, you can connect yourself. Now with the project that you, do, you have done, you did, you built a, a sensing system that sends certain things and you uh, send it to uh, your uh, uh, microcontroller. So it is like a sub smart system. Maybe you are doing some certain switching on and off something or analyzing the data. This is part of the smart, the smart uh, system. Now, how to interpret the data? You are collecting a lot of data. Then you have to have the intelligence to analyze this data. How to interface these sensors, how to get the data from the sensors. So these are some of the challenges uh, of the sensing. Networking, I mentioned that communication is an integral part of a smart home. So what is the medium? Which type? Wi-Fi, uh, Zigbee, uh, Bluetooth. There are different technologies. Each one has certain limitations in different things, in, in the range, in the bandwidth, how much information I can send. So based on the usage of the communication channel, you can select your, your, your channel. The database, as I mentioned here, I mentioned a lot of recording, recording. Where this data will go? It's a huge data. Uh, as I mentioned, cloud is, is, is the option now. Sometimes you have server, uh, but server can have limitations and if, every time you have to go and clean it up. But the, uh, when you work with cloud, they give you this is a better uh, connection, a better communication even for you any, anywhere you can get, get this information. Uh, prediction, data mining, all this is this uh, decision making. These are the artificial intelligence, the machine learning. And this is something very important. We mentioned some of the aspects. A camera can, using face recognition, can tell that, oh, this is guy, this guy is a residence in this house. Can tell you that right away. Oh, this is a guest. This is from the guest list. So there is no problem. So you are incorporating this intelligence, this decision making, because once it recognizes you, if if it did not recognize the person, then it has to warn you, send you an SMS message or an email uh, that there is a problem uh, or send a message to the police directly that there's someone is uh, hacking the house. Automations. Now, these sensors in many times, for example, the thermostat, uh, the smart thermostat, it will detect, for example, the temperature. It will send a message to the AC to switch on or off. To the heater as we as has been done but now it's it's more automated this is why we call that here we have the actuators the actuators is a terminology we use we don't use it much in civil engineering it's more of mechatronics that this is the device between the sensor and the opening switching on and off for example i want to switch on the appliances 
okay so i send a message and the actuator is the one that's responsible to switch on or off your your uh, appliances safety is very important here uh, definitely because you are switching high voltage so you have to make sure that this is switched uh, in, in in a safe way privacy and this is what we talk about that is very important now i mentioned many times communication what if someone start to hack this communication channels and now hackers everywhere now we see people hack the most secure communication systems what if this happened to me okay so this is something very serious and uh, now whenever anyone talks about security sorry uh, smart applications security is an integral part uh, i have a proposal uh, that is uh, funded uh, by internationally and we work on the smart grid okay and part of the project is to make sure that we have a secure channel because we want to extract information from the smart meters to do some analysis in the power system something that we could we couldn't do before because we don't have access to the people energy usage now we can so from this we can as a utility we can get a lot of information however security has to be there what if someone else hack your house i will give you a, a very simple example with everything now in communication, in one of the countries, some hackers managed to enter the grid and switch off a huge power supply, like a supply that provides power, power to one city. And I mean, and this is not a myth. This is it's not a movie, uh, Die Hard 4 or something. Uh, I mean, if you watch this movie, Die Hard 4, it is, uh, although it was like a, uh, somehow fantasy, but nowadays, whatever in this movie can be done you can remotely access everything and this is the price that we have to pay having our system smart then security comes there and this is something extremely important now what are the pros and the cons of the smart homes of course as you now we have mentioned here it's a peace of mind for the home owners you can monitor you can uh, do uh, you can for example you are in the uh, work you remember oh my god i did not switch off my coffee maker you can do that right away you can check even its status okay oh i i'm not sure if i locked my door or not okay you can switch you can uh, make sure that uh, remotely close your, your door so this is very uh, important things also uh, you can you can do uh, also your your again uh, some of your comfort for example you can you are going to your uh, your home uh, somewhere, uh, not your regular home, you are going to a cottage that you own, okay? And it's minus 40 degrees uh, there. So before you arrive to your home, you switch on your uh, uh, warming system, your whatever you have, any system that you use to, to warm the house before, before you arrive, okay? So all these conveniences are uh, something worth the, uh, the technology, worth the money we spend. Okay. Uh, also here, the energy, uh, we can control the energy, as I said, the load, the lights, for example, switch on and off, the AC, detect if there's no one in the house, then maybe I don't need to make it 22, 23, maybe can it be 25 or 26. And before the people start to arrive to the house, I will raise, I mean, decrease the temperature and make it comfortable the entire. So this, uh, with this uh, ability, with this flexibility, uh, the, the house uh, becomes more and more uh, comfortable and energy efficient. Now, there are some drawbacks. Uh, the first one is the complexity of the technology. Sometimes it is very hard for people to deal with it. Uh, when I said people, it means my age. Uh, but usually young guys like you guys, you don't have a problem regardless of, because you guys, you, you can deal with technology uh, very easily. So, but uh, at the end of the day, you are not the one who will buy the technology, it's your dad and your mom so you have to convince them you have to make them comfortable so this is uh, many companies they try to make things easier for the people to use it so that they encourage them to to buy the technology now there are two important issues here the first one is security what if my security camera that is supposed to detect vulgar some someone hack it and someone hack my security system in the house and unlock the door so the system is supposed to be 
uh, done for my own comfort, security. If someone hack this, then they can enter the house without my permission. So as again, here I stress on the importance of security, sometimes also privacy. Uh, people, they don't want to know when I use my fridge, I mean, sorry, my washing machine or my dishwasher. And also these things can lead to security issues as well. If they know, if someone hack your house and uh, get your information about your energy usage, then the same person, what will do? They can attack your house because now they understand your your your, your behavior. So this is another uh, problems with with the technology. So no technology comes without a cost. There is a money you have to pay. Uh, you cannot get the comfort without uh, these issues. And the good news is that everyone now is working on this. And and what I just hear is just a glimpse of what a smart home is. But actually, this is a huge topic. And you could have a course, complete course about just a smart home. If you talk about in details about the sensors, the smart sensors, the artificial intelligence techniques, the communication techniques, all these things in details, this is a course by itself. And this is something open for you guys, whoever is interested. Not everyone will be interested in this as civil engineers, but if you are interested, uh, th the objective of my lecture today is first to test you in the exam few uh, multiple choice questions uh, second which is more important is that is to open this door for you and tell you okay there is this technology if you need to know more about it there's nothing preventing you from understanding more and designing i mean I, we talked about smart home but buildings now any building commercial building industrial building governmental building all these technologies i talked about or at least some of them they are they are incorporating this smartness Okay, uh, transportation systems, they are incorporating this, uh, this smartness. Uh, so for you as civil engineer working in different sectors, uh, you will start to see the smartness coming there, which is based on sensors. So you understand now by, by the end of this course, what is a sensor? Or I am hoping that you understand what the sensor is. And you understand the energy, the power, that is because it's sensors and energy together. It can make the world more efficient and and safer. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the end of today's lecture. I will stop my recording now.